Hi there. In this video, I want to show you how to download and install the JDK Java Development Kit version 8. And then I'm going to show you how to download and install Eclipse, which is the platform that we'll be using to write all of our Java code. After watching this video, you'll find another video for upgrading to Java version 9 if you so choose. Java 9 is the latest release of Java. And it's not mandatory for upgrading in this course, but I've shown you how to do that in the next lecture. Uh, for the purposes of learning to program in Java 8 or learning to program in Java 9, there's virtually no difference. There are a few uh, you know, differences in Java 9 uh, that were introduced. Um, I'm going to talk about those towards the very end of this course. I think the last one or two lectures is where I cover those slight differences, but uh, otherwise it's going to be the same process. It's not mandatory for you to upgrade to Java 9, but that video uh, is there for you in case you'd like to. So with that being said, in this video I'm going to show you how to set up your development environment to work with Java version 8. And this is a Windows machine. I'm using Windows 7. I have a similar video for the Mac operating system. So if you're a Mac user, make sure to check out the other video. And right now I'm using a Windows 7 machine, but these instructions are going to be pretty much almost identical uh, to other Windows operating systems. So whether 7, Windows 8, or 10, um, the instructions are pretty much going to be the same. So let's uh, open up the command prompt. You can go into the search bar and type in CMD and it will launch the command prompt. And over here, just to prove to you that there's no Java at this point on this computer, if I type in Java-version, notice it's saying Java is not a recognized program. Okay, so we need to first download and install Java on this computer. So just type in JDK8 here in Google, and uh, that's going to take you to the first page here. Just click on that link. This is the Oracle Downloads page. Just accept the license agreement here and scroll down to where we see Windows. This is a 64-bit machine, so I'm going to click on this download right here. So click on that. It's going to be an executable, and the download has begun. This may take a minute or two depending on your internet speed, so I'm just going to sort of zoom ahead in this video to the point where this is done downloading. Okay, so there we have it. The download is complete. I'm going to click on that executable and the installer will start. So just hit the run button here and this is the installer. So just hit the next button, uh, leave everything as default, click next. Now it's preparing our system for the install and now it's asking us to choose the destination folder. So this is going to be in the C drive program files. There's going to be a Java folder that's created and then it's going to be this JRE 1.8 uh, and so on. So just uh, we're not going to change this destination. We're going to just click on next and the installation has begun. And there you go, it's saying Java Development Kit 8 has been installed successfully, so let's just close that. And now, if we go to the terminal again, uh, and I type in Java-version, hit enter, actually it's going to say that it's still not a recognized program because we need to um, open a new command prompt. So let's close this and open another one. So I'm going to type in CMD here again and then do java-version and there we go. Notice it's saying Java version 1.8. This is the runtime environment. So when we want to run Java applications, let's say you download an application from the internet and it's been written in Java, the Java runtime environment is used um, for, for you to run it on your computer. But to develop your own applications in Java, you need to have this JVAC command working. So if you type in J-A-V-A-C dash version and hit enter, notice it's saying JVAC is not recognized as an internal or external command. Okay, so it's not recognizing JVAC. So what we need to do is add an environment variable so that Java programs can be compiled. And I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. Uh, let's first make our way to the destination folder where we installed Java. So if you click on the start menu or, you know, depending on your operating system, uh, just click on computer. However, you make your way over to the C drive and go to program files. And you'll see that there's a Java folder. So we've got two folders, the JDK and the JRE. To run Java applications, we need the JRE. That's what is being shown here, the Java runtime environment. 
but to write our own applications we need the JDK all right so we have both which is good so what we need to do is uh, in our path variable we need to set the location for where JVAC is so let's click into this folder go to the bin directory and you'll see that there's a JVAC here okay so just copy this entire folder location so program files Java JDK slash bin take this directory and go to um, my computer again right click and go to properties at least that's how it is in Windows 7 whatever way uh, you use to get to their system settings uh, you're going to click on this advanced system settings and there's this environment variables button click there and now we're going to add a new path uh, variable just type in path and the value for this variable is going to be the location for JDK 1.8 slash bin okay so hit enter and close out of all of these options and you can just exit out we don't need all of these uh, directories open and let's open a new command prompt uh, type in CMD in the search box and then do JVAC dash version and boom there we go notice it's saying JVAC and it's giving the exact version so now it's working we've got Java dash version as well as um, whoops I misspelled version it's Java dash version hit enter we got Java version and JVAC version both of them are working so now we're ready to uh, download and install Eclipse so let's go back to Google and type in Eclipse here and hit enter and this is the link that we want eclipse.org and uh, as a matter of fact Eclipse Oxygen this is the latest version so it doesn't matter which version of Eclipse we use just try to get the latest one if possible uh, so the one at, at the time of this recording is Eclipse Oxygen so let's click that and click on this download button here and it'll take us to the Eclipse page and we want this get Eclipse Oxygen so click that you want to make sure you get the Eclipse installer so this is that download let's click that and there you go the download has started I'm just gonna zoom ahead to the point where it is done downloading the Eclipse installer is done downloading let's open that file up and press run And now we need to choose which version of Eclipse we want. I'm just going to use the first option, Eclipse for Java Developers, and click that button. And it's asking us the installation folder. I'm going to leave it as default. So it's going into my home directory, which is users uh, slash owner uh, in the C drive. And then there's going to be a folder called Eclipse. And inside of that folder is where we're going to download Java Oxygen. Okay, so just click on install accept the license agreement and now it's installing once the installation is complete there's a launch button but I'm not gonna click that just yet I'm gonna click on this open in system explorer click that button and this is that icon that we're gonna uh, click on to run Eclipse notice where it's located it's in uh, users slash owner slash Eclipse and then there's Java oxygen folder and then there's Eclipse so let's double click it when Eclipse launches, it asks us to choose a workspace. This is where all of our code that we write, uh, the Java code, this is where it's going to go. So it chooses a default directory, users slash owner slash Eclipse workspace. I'm going to leave that as default and click on launch. All right, and after a few moments, this should uh, open up Eclipse. Now, just a quick note, I'm zooming ahead in this video. Um, whenever there's any kind of loading, I try to skip over that so that this video is not too long. You may have to wait when you launch Eclipse or when you're downloading things, okay? So this is the Eclipse welcome screen. I'm going to close this uh, welcome screen by clicking that X, and I'm going to create a new project. Right-click into this package explorer and go to New, Java Project. And I'm going to name this project, uh, we'll just call it Java 8 project and I'm going to choose this option right here use default JRE section click on that and go to configure JREs click that button and notice that it has selected um, the JRE that is installed in our location so in, in program files in the Java folder the JRE this is where Java 8 is installed so I'm going to leave that as is 
click on apply and close and just hit finish and this is our project folder okay if you expand it by clicking on this arrow notice it has some things in there this is the Java library the JRE uh, version 8 and if we want to create a Java file we just right click in this source folder and go to new and click on class and I'll go over all of these details the specifics of you know what it is to create a Java project and and what is a class uh, so just follow along for now don't worry about the details I'll explain all of these later for now we just want to make sure that we can write Java programs using Eclipse so I'm gonna name this class test All right, that's where in this uh, text box with a capital T okay and select this first option right here where it says public static void main checkbox that and then just hit finish again I'll go over all of these details uh, later on this is our first Java file and you see these two slashes I'm just gonna remove this sentence completely and just follow along type the following code uh, system with a capital S dot out dot print LN and you're gonna need parentheses and inside of those parentheses we're gonna need quotes double quotes and just type in hello world and at the end of this line we need a semicolon okay so not important to go over the details of what this code is and what it does I just want to make sure we get some Java code working uh, so that we can verify that your installation is working successfully so once we're done writing this code we want to save it by doing control s and that will save this file and then there's a play button up here see this it says run so click on that play button and this will run this Java file and there we go it's done running and notice down here something was printed out it's printing the words hello world so if you made it this far uh, you're pretty much ready to rock and roll with this course the rest of the lectures are going to be uh, you know just learning to program in Java now up to this point we've got Java 8 on this machine and like I said before uh, the differences between Java 8 and 9 will be discussed uh, you know much later towards the end of the course because those differences require you to have an understanding of Java but for the purposes of learning to program in Java 8 and Java 9 your environment so far is more than enough you're ready to rock and roll